This is Christopher Greger, who is on trial for child abuse and murder in New Jersey. On April 2nd, 2021, Greger arrived at a hospital with his son, Corey, in his arms, who was unresponsive and unconscious. Doctors found several injury marks on the child's body. The six-year-old child died shortly after. Gregor fled the scene and went on the run before being stopped by the police and arrested. What's up? Your weapons are right to answer. Facing charges of first-degree murder and child endangerment, Gregor pleaded not guilty and went to trial. His defense argued that Corey, who stayed with Gregor after his divorce, died due to sepsis, which was caused when the child was visiting his mother, Brianna. And Jersey Shore Medical Center told her, Brianna, leave the child here. And she did not. She took Corey home, signed papers against medical ad. Vice. She took him home. A doctor later debunked that claim. My opinion was that there was nothing available in all the discovery and the medical records that were consistent with an uh, infection causing um, Corey's death or even playing a role in it. When you say nothing available, it didn't exist? I didn't see anything that suggested infection. And is that opinion to a medical degree of certainty? Absolutely. In fact, another doctor testified that Corey was murdered. Corey's manner of death is homicide. Corey died of blunt impact injuries of the chest and abdomen with laceration of the heart, left pulmonary contusion, and laceration and contusion of the liver. A child welfare officer who visited Corey days before he died noticed several injury marks on his body. Saw um, some bruises to his legs, arms, and hips. I also saw a minor laceration to uh, above his, one of his eyebrows. I forget what eyebrow exactly. Um, while they were in the stairway leading up to the apartment. CCTV footage later showed the abuse Corey faced at the hands of his father. In the video from a gym, Gregor could be seen deliberately increasing the speed of a treadmill while Corey ran on it, until the child couldn't run any faster. Instead of stopping, Gregor pulled Corey up and forced him onto the treadmill. Failing to keep up, Corey fell several more times as his heartless father watched on. Eventually, Gregor was found guilty of aggravated manslaughter and child endangerment. He currently awaits sentencing and faces 10 to 30 years in prison. While Christopher Gregor awaits his fate after abusing his son to death, what happens when a mother leaves her daughter alone and goes on a holiday? Like in the case of Crystal Candelario, who is accused of starving her toddler to death in Cleveland, Ohio. In June 2023, 32-year-old Candelario left her 16-month-old daughter alone at home and jetted off to a vacation in Puerto Rico. She returned 10 days later, only to find baby Jaylin extremely dehydrated and starved to death. According to the medical examiner, Candelario had tried to cover up her actions by dressing the dead child in fresh clothes before calling authorities. Please. What's your name? Crystal. Crystal. What's your last name, Crystal? Not only that, when the police arrived, Candelario lied that she was home all week and her child was not eating well. So, um, but in the last week, she get a vomiting too. But I was trying controlling because I know I give to her Tylenol or something, you know, for yeah, uh, for controlling the vomiting. Okay. Uh, Candelario was arrested and charged with aggravated murder and child endangerment. She later pleaded guilty to those charges. At her sentencing, the medical examiner said the baby had resorted to eating her own feces out of extreme hunger. In addition, there was abundant fecal material present cakes on the fingers, the fingernails, the hands the feet as well as the soles of the feet. 
The same material was found on her lips, which were very dry and flaking, as well as in her oral cavity, caked to her teeth. Judge Brendan Sheehan didn't mince his words before passing the sentence, saying, Candelario chose to have fun over parenthood. You committed the ultimate act of betrayal, leaving your baby terrified, alone, unprotected, to suffer what I heard was the most gruesome death imaginable. Finally, it was time for the careless mother to learn her fate. Just as you didn't let Jalen out of her confinement until she died, so too you should spend the rest of your life in a cell without freedom. The only difference will be that prison will at least feed you and give you liquids that you denied her. Ultimately, Candelario was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for the murder of baby Jalen. Aggravated murder. I'm going to sentence you to life in prison without the possibility of parole. This is Mitchell Blair, a mother of four who is accused of murder and child abuse in Michigan. In 2014, Blair allegedly tortured and killed two of her children at her apartment in downtown Detroit. Shockingly, the 35-year-old continued to live with the bodies of her dead children, along with her two remaining kids. Until two years later, when an eviction crew arrived to throw her out and discovered the bodies of 13-year-old Stoney Blair and 9-year-old Stephen Barry stored in a freezer in the living room. Blair was arrested and charged with two counts of premeditated murder and first-degree child abuse. Before going to trial, Blair appeared at a custody hearing of her two surviving children. During the hearings, Blair repeatedly exploded at the two fathers of her kids. Never, never. You understand what I'm saying? I don't understand the whole crew here now, but y'all was never there for them. How many birthdays did you miss? Period. You can't be quiet until it's your turn. You're like a damn fool y'all putting on that shot. Step out here, step out here for me. Step out here. 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 Eventually, Blair pleaded guilty to all charges and asked to be sent to prison for life. To my understanding, to get a trial is to get to the truth, right? I'm already saying that I did it. I'm freely giving myself and accepting life in prison. If I'm already giving myself to you like, hey, I did this, what's the problem? She believed her teenage daughter and nine-year-old son were sexually abusing her youngest child, Matthew. What did you do to Stoney Blair that makes you guilty of premeditating murder? She raped my son. I intentionally killed her. The killer mom then went into gruesome details of how she tortured and ultimately killed Stoney and Stephen. I assaulted her every time he told me what she did to him. Um, by assault, I mean I punched her. I have put a bag over her head till she lost consciousness. Um, I threw hot water on her, scalding hot water from the faucet. Um, All right, tell me what happened to Stephen. Um, basically the same thing. I put a bag over his head. He lost consciousness. I did that a couple times. So I grabbed Stephen, I grabbed the belt, and I put a belt around his neck and I lifted him up like do you like how this feels being choked with a belt so I dropped him I held him up until he lost consciousness as well did you also punch him yes I did multiple times yes I did you talked about choking him did you also burn him yes I did okay how did you do that hot water scalding hot water so yes I threw hot water in his genital area multiple times multiple times before declaring her fate Judge Dana Hathaway had some words for the defendant. Ultimately, Blair was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for the murder of her two kids. You're therefore sentenced to the Michigan Department of Corrections for the rest of your life without the possibility of parole, meaning, of course, that you will never get out. While Michelle Blair showed no remorse in court, 